the prosperity gospel and the God of Mama. And the topic of today is this disarming covetousness. Disarming covetousness. Disarming covetousness. So we're going to talk about covetousness today. And uh, so please go ahead and um, invite everybody that you need to invite. And let's go and check on a video. Let's go and do a video. And uh, we'll go from that video to uh, other things that we need to show you today. All right. You all know this video. You all know this video, but uh, let's have a look at it. particular video what what is wrong with it is it not just fundraising and that's what most people would call it this is just ordinary fundraising why are you making a big deal out of it um you know who in the world carry to church or keeps in the bank or at home billions even if it is only three million three million dollars but who keeps million of dollars in cash because it's a cash economy in nigeria who keeps those kind of who keeps that kind of money at home or in his account normally people even people who have that kind of money they know they know the loss of money if they didn't steal it they know the law of money. So what is the law of money? The law of money says that money shouldn't be kept or be stored. Anytime you store money, you create inflation. Money is not meant to be stored waiting to do, to do somewhere. Money is meant to be, to, to be made to work. Money is meant to work. So... Anybody that has a huge amount, like one billion, if he is normal, he, that money should be working for him. He should have that money working for him in some businesses or in some investments or in some, yeah, it should be in some industry, in some um, factories or in some processes of production or that money should be somewhere working for the for 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 the person creating and multiplying whatever the person has and even if you have it waiting or keeping it in the bank normally you will not keep that kind of money in a savings account because it is in a savings account you can just put money and come and collect it back but when you have that kind of money, you want to put it in a deposit account. And what is a deposit account? A deposit account is where you sign a contract, you put the money there, and, you know, 
You don't just put it there and take it anytime you want from there. When you put money in a deposit account, they will make you to put the money there for like a year or more or at least six months. But I think in most countries, it's like at least a year. You've got to sign the contract that for a year, you will not touch it. And if you touch it for a year, I mean, between that period of the contract, then you are losing all the percentages and the dividends that is supposed to be coming on that money. So who else could be having that amount of money and the money is not in a fixed account, uh, in a deposit account, where the money is going? So if it is in a fixed account, it means the money is not available for you to just come and bring to church or to just come and give. And if it is in business or in industry or in investment, it's impossible for you to just go and take, you know, say because pastor announced in the church that uh, I must bring a billion dollar, a billion naira, and you go and withdraw the money from the from the investment. You are going to spoil the, a, a lot of things. Are, you are going to lose more than that amount of money that you are putting that you are taking off because if you you have an investment going on for ten billion and the business is already going on. I mean, in a, a business that is controlling 10 billion or 1 billion, it has so many things, so many consequences, so many people connected to it, so many, I mean, so many processes that are going on that you cannot just come and stop it. Even if you are Dan Gote or you are Bill Gates, you cannot just come and say, I withdraw 1 billion like that. If you do that, you are going to have more crisis that is going to cost you more than that 1 billion to, to revamp or to recoup. So, for those of you who don't know the way mo law, I mean money works, then go and get my books on, the, on those topics. But, or at least go and listen to my series on the laws of money. So, money don't work like that. So, for you to be able to, to, be able to withdraw and, you know, just you know, come to church, you don't even know that the pastor was going to talk about this. So, you are coming to church to pray to God, and you, you are not aware of the plans of the pastor, but pastor had his own plan for you. And the pastor's plan is that he's going to make announcement that, you know, somebody, 10 people will bring 1 billion each. So there is no way you could have prepared that money unless Holy Ghost maybe makes you to keep the money somewhere. But it's most unlikely. Businessmen don't think like that. Business doesn't work like that. So where, who are the people that might have the possibility of keeping cash, one billion naira or two, three billion, I mean, two million US dollars at home, cash, or in the office or somewhere in the safe. Who are the people who will keep such an amount of money cash? Because if they are businesses, the money will be working for them. If they are businessmen, the money will be in business. If they are investors, the money will be in investments. If they are industrialists, the money will be in the industry or factory or business transaction, one way or the other. There is no way you have that kind of money waiting in your pocket or in your house. So who are the people that will most likely have that kind of money, one billion naira, available for them to just bring out and give? I think the only answer we could give to this is that the only people who have this kind of money are people who are not in some legitimate businesses or who and who did it, who have to hide that money from the public eye so and they are most likely the politicians which means that because when the politicians take it they have to hide them in the houses or in the storage or in the coffin or in the farm or in some places so that they will not have EF, e, e, EF, EFCC or something, EFCC running after them. So, as that, so that they, there will be no extra questions and, you know, unnecessary questions. Because anybody could see and, you know, blow a whistle and they could be in trouble. So that's why they hide those money in some, you know, places that are, in, you know, that's why they have to hide the money physically somewhere. And if the money is being hidden or stored physically somewhere, they are the ones who stand the chance of bringing one billion cash and give to a pastor or to the church just because they they, they needed to use it to they needed to uh, to use it to authenticate themselves. They needed to use that money to legitimize themselves. They use they you know they needed to clean it. They needed to clean the money, would they say, or they needed to uh, launder launder it's money laundering. So, uh, for you to, you know, like, no, and that's, that, what, that's what they do. 
So it's a lot of corruption. It's most likely that that's a corrupt money. So let's hear the announcement. Let's hear. Let's see that video again. <laughs> So the idea, what, what, why, what is bad in a pastor raising money? There are a lot of under, under, underlying currents or underlying currents or underlining currents in this situation. And the underlining current is the fact that it's not the fact that he's calling for offering. Anybody can call for offering, right, in his own church. But the amount, the specific amount that the man of God is mentioning when he's calling for this offering is suspicious. And it makes us to also think who are the category of people that will have that kind of cash or that kind of money at home readily available, not in investment, not in business, not in industry, and not in transaction, who will be ready to give that kind of money out. And it is clear that all, the only people who will be qualified to have this kind of money are people who are stolen it, who have stolen it one way or the other, who are hiding it. And these are the politicians because we are, we are living in a country that is called Nigeria. And Nigeria, these things happen all the time. The politicians have this kind of money. People who have worked hard for their money, people who have labored for their money like that, they will not just come and give with a one billion like that. It's not easy. Even if that is just three million dollars or four million dollars, it's still not easy for somebody to just come and give that kind of money all at once like that. People who work for their money, people who have worked out for their money, they don't behave like that. They, they value money more than that. And if a pastor like Pastor Deboye is calling and specifically naming the amount of money that people should bring to him, it means that he's used to it. It's the E and those politicians, they are eating from the same table. It means that they are all eating from the same table of corruption. They are eating from the same table of national cake. It means that he is aware that there are people in that congregation that have access to that kind of money. He is aware that they are, maybe it's not even the first time people are bringing that kind of money. Because he's not saying one person that God told him that one person will bring one billion. He is saying ten people should bring one billion. So it means that he is aware that Nigerians, you know, have been doing this to him. They have been giving this kind of money to him. Now, does he ask them where... How do they, do they get this kind of money? Where it comes from? Nobody is sure, Marcella. Let's have a look again. Now, who by the grace of God can give one billion naira? By the grace of God, where do they make that money from? Would the pastor ask them where they made that money from? And where is this practice coming from of asking for one one billion naira or one thousand naira or one amount, one specific amount? When have they? When have the pastors taken the place of the Holy Ghost? If you say God can provide or God can touch people's heart, why don't you allow God to talk to the people's heart and for God to speak to them and tell them what amount of money they should pay? Why is it that we are not giving God the chance? We are not giving the Holy Spirit. In this kind of churches, only God doesn't stand the chance. Because Holy Ghost is shut out. It is the man of God himself that is replaced the Holy Spirit. Because it's, if, if we want to be led by the Spirit, we should allow the Spirit of God to dictate or to whisper to the mind and heart of individuals for them to give what amount they want to give. But this is the power of suggestion. 
This is programming people and specifically telling you the amount that you must give. Are you God? Are you the Holy Ghost? Let Holy Spirit tell me how much I must give now. And this is very suspicious when it's coming to this kind of amount. It is very, very troubling. And if you do this, can you imagine in America, so a pastor will come out, on, or in Britain, a pastor will come out on stage and say, I need 10 people to give 1 million dollars each. Or 1 million pounds each. Just publicly like that. And it's being recorded on television. This is, these are all evidences of corrupt system. Corrupt country. Corrupt, corrupt, you know, culture. Corrupt, uh, you know, practices. Because there is no accountability, you know. No accountability in the system. No accountability in the country. Because he, th this man knows that EFCC will not come for him. The police will not come for him. The government people will not come for him. Because in a normal country, security agents are supposed to come to him. And secret services are supposed to come to him and say, Who are those people? Where did they get the money from? How do you know that they are there? And where, you know, these are the people corrupting the country. She's, you know, stealing away the money of the of, of, of the commonwealth of the nation. Come on, Ashan. Now, who can give one billion naira? Now, you, you want to f wonder what do they want to use the one billion for? Ten people to give one billion naira. That one billion naira, what would they use it for? I wouldn't have complained if they say that one billion naira we are going to use it to take care of all the homeless people in Lagos. Oh, bravo, kudos. Nobody will complain. Or if they come and say that one billion naira each. We are going to use it to take all the children that are out of school, to take them back to school. Kudos. Nobody will complain. We'll restore back all the school children back to school. Kudos. We'll be clapping for them. Or if they say that money is going to be used to take care of all the ch church members who cannot pay for their school fees. All the church members who cannot pay for the school fees, we're going to use the money and, you know, sponsor their education in the university or in the secondary school so that there will be nobody here who cannot pay for the school fee, for the school fees. If we are going to use it to pay for the school fees of the people, who, even if they are church members alone, even if they are not people in the com community, let's use it to do some good work. Um, and there is nothing good, there is nothing more valuable than to meet the needs of human being. There is nothing more precious than human being because it is human being that God died for. Jesus himself, son of God, died to give life, to, to help human being. God Almighty gave his only begotten son, not for building. You know what they are getting this money for? This money is being collected for building, for bricks and cement. This money is going to be used for bricks and cement. It's going to be used just to build a, a hall, an auditorium. It's not going to be used for people. They will say, oh, but, uh, but it's for people because people will come and sit down. <laughs> Are they going to be living there? They are coming there because of that three by three kilometer, how many times do you gather three by three kilometer? How many times do you fill it up? Once a month or once a year? So because of once a year program or once a month program, you are just going to bury billions in bricks and cement because of a, in an event that happens two, 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 once a month or once a year. So this event doesn't happen every day. All other days of the year, those three by three or the three will be empty. Because you, there is no way you gather three by three, you know, that's like, you know, five million people every day. That happens only once a year or so, or twice a year. So how will you come and, but if you use this billion 
to take to give education to people if you use this billion to you know take care of the widows and the homeless and the fatherless that you you are giving life to people eternally you are saving lives you are you know you are giving people education you are i mean nothing as valuable as human lives and it is only what we do for human being that counts most in heaven it, but all these things, you know, we three by three kilometer you know, building and all that, is more of ego. It's more working towards ego of the people. It's more for us to be able to say, oh, I have the largest of the, we gather the largest crowd. But what about what you do for human beings? You see, in our society, we have devalued the value of people. We don't value human lives anymore. What we value are these kind of things, projects, projects, projects. We don't value human lives again. How is it? Someone on the show. Can give one billion naira. Are you sure it's by the grace of God? Are you sure that it's not by the grace of stealing? Are you sure it's not by the grace of corruption? Are you sure it's not by the grace of drug pushing, narcotics, you know, uh, uh, cocaine, and drug selling? Are you sure that the people who will come are not politicians who have stolen? Are you sure that it's not by theft, not by corruption, not by depriving of the widows and the orphans and everybody of their of of, of their of their of, of their money are you sure it's by the grace of god <laughs> idea this fundraising tactics is it coming from the bible you show me one scripture in the bible where this kind of tactics has been adopted show me one scripture in the bible where this scripture where this tactics is being used is is of the spirit of the world is the spirit of mammon is the spirit of money and we have to you know fight it because this is this is the spirit of the world the spirit of money the spirit of mammon taking over the church of the lord jesus christ yeah so let's let it share. so this is what we are talking about this is not there is no connection between what these people are doing and the spirit of god this is not coming from the spirit of god this is coming from the spirit of the world it is the spirit of mammon it is mammon that is making you to be able to you know that is making everything to you know revolve around money it is mammon, the spirit of mammon that is making people, you know, people that can see, that come and, can come and see the secretary of the, of the, of the, of the bishop, uh, of the geo, you know, that are the people who can give money. So it depends on how much you can give. That's what determines your ass, ass, access. Because if you keep on hearing that uh, announcement, the people who can give one billion uh, each, they have to go and see the geo. But the other guys, they can just, you know, they have to go and write down somewhere. So it depends on how much you are able to give that gives you what determines the access that you have in that, in the, in that church. Amount. If God is speaking to you to sell $1,000 seeds in amount, if God is speaking to you, give that same amount. If God is right here, 
to give that same amount. If God is speaking to you to sow $1,000 seeds tonight, I want to lay hands on your envelope as you bring it forward. I'm going to ask the Lord to do something miraculous tonight, to release a harvest in the next 90 days. I believe God Almighty will do it in your life. He has done it many times before. He'll do it again. God Almighty is speaking to you right now to sow that seed. Now, precious people, I do not want you passing offering buckets. I want the people to bring their seed to me and put it in my hand because the, the anointing of God is on you right now. If you put it in that, in that bucket, you're going to lose it. But if you put it in, in my hand, you're going to gain something from heaven tonight. Everybody lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. I want many of you to start walking forward. If you're giving a thousand, five hundred, or a hundred, start coming down. Right now, come on. I want to lay my hand on your rainbow. I want to lay my hand on your rainbow. I want to ask God to prosper you tonight. You in your homes, keep calling that number on the screen and do the same thing. And I will lay my hand on your name when you call it in. Right now, call that number on the screen. I'm believing God for the release of a harvest tonight on you. I'm believing God to bless your life, bless your future, bless your home with prosperity, divine prosperity. People of God, can we lift our hands and pray in the Spirit right now? Come on, everyone, lift your voices and pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, I give you praise for the anointing. Jesus, Jesus, I give you praise for the anointing. Get to that, get to your phone. Call in your seed right now. Whether a thousand, five hundred, or a hundred, do it now. God is speaking to you. I'm asking for those amounts because I want to see your faith released tonight. When you sow larger amounts, you release faith. And when faith is released, God Almighty will release the harvest. That's just the way it works, people. That's the way it works. While the people here in this audience are coming down, you go ahead and call that number on the screen. Do it now. Believe God for a supernatural harvest right now. Jesus, I worship you. Jesus, I give you. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, here we go. Let's examine what we're having here in our hands. So the same spirit, you see that it's the same spirit as in Nigeria that is, you know, it's the same prosperity gospel spirit. And it's a spirit of deception that has crept into the church. Let's have a look, please. Right here, to give that same amount. If God is speaking to you to sow $1,000 seeds tonight, I want to lay hands on your envelope as you bring it forward. I'm you see, now, see what is happening. I understand God that he's repenting now. He's saying he's repenting that uh, he's gone too far with it. But, but he's still doing it. That's the funny thing about the repentance of these people. But uh, what I'm saying, what I'm talking about is this. Uh, in Nigeria, it's one billion naira, which is like three million dollars. Here, it's just one thousand dollars. So they are they are very humble compared to Nigerians. Yeah? Okay, that's one billion naira, and here is one thousand naira. And see the lies the guy is using. What he actually wanted is that the people should bring the money to his hand because he's probably suspicious because it's 1,000 each that if they put it in the envelope, people, somebody might steal part of his team or maybe some of them might get lost. He wants them to be personally his. So he's trying to lie to them and say, well, I will pray for your envelope, but he's not paying for any envelope. It's just all tricks and robbery. Let's start all over again. Right here to give that same amount. If God is speaking to you to sow $1,000 seeds tonight, I want to lay hands on your envelope as you bring it forward. I'm going to so, ask the Lord. You see, if God is speaking to you, but that God is Him. He is the one telling them the amount, not God. If it is God going to speak to people about the amount they should give, let God do it without your suggestion. Well, you are the one suggesting it. Are you the God? You are the one suggesting me to them to do it. Let God speak to them. To do something miraculous tonight. To release a harvest in the next 90 days. Stop. I 
What is the guarantee that the harvest will come in the next 90 days? Where? What is the guarantee? Where is the assurance that anybody, if I give $1,000 now, that in 90 days I'm going to have 10, 10 times more or 100 times more? What is the guarantee? Who, what is the guarantee? Where is the assurance? I believe God Almighty will do it in your life. He has done it many times before. He'll do it again. Stop. Okay, what if it doesn't, if it doesn't happen? People are using the name of God to, you know, they are just mass merchandising the name of God. Why should God take responsibility for your decision? Look at his eyes. It is your decision. You are asking people for $1,000. You are the one telling them that they are going to get it in harvest. And you are using the name of God, saying that God is going to do it. Leave God alone. Leave God out of the picture. You are the one who is promising people who will a, a harvest or 100 times, 10 times harvest up in, 10, in 90 days, in 3 months. So, you take responsibility. Leave God out of the picture. Mm -hmm. To release a harvest in the next 90 days. Stop. So, if I give $1,000 in 90 days, I will get 100 times more. Harvest. 20 times more. 50 times more. What is the guarantee? Can I come back to you and say, yes, yeah, I gave the money, 90 days has passed. <laughs> Nine, more than 100 days has passed and I still don't have the money. Where is the harvest? Can I come and claim my harvest? <laughs> I believe God Almighty will do it in your life. He has done it many times before. He'll do it again. God Almighty is speaking to you right now. To sow that seed. Now, precious people, I do so, not want you passing. God Almighty is speaking to you right now to sow that seed, $1,000. I'm not hearing God. I'm hearing you, not God. You see the way this what you, you taking advantage of you? They make it to look as if it is God that is doing it. But they are lying on God. They are using the name of God to manipulate you so that you would think that it is actually God that is speaking to you. But they are the ones suggesting it. That is the power of suggestion and the power of programming. They are programming you, suggesting you, programming you to believe that it is God. That's why they have to use the name of God so frequently. In offering buckets, I want the people to bring their seed to me and put it in my hand. So because they, they, you know, they have to bring the money to his hand. Don't even put it in offering ba basket. Because what goes to the offering ba basket has to be counted by everybody. But what comes to my hand goes to my pocket. Nobody, no responsibility for anybody. I don't give account to anyone. If the anointing of God is on me right now. If you put it in that, in that so, go, go ahead, go ahead. bucket, you're going to lose it. Wow. If you put it in, go in, back, in my hand, back. you're going to get in that bucket. You're going to speak into you right now to sow that seed. Now, precious people, I do not want you passing offering buckets. I want the people to bring their seed to me and put it in my hand. Because the the anointing of God is on me right now. If you put it in that in that bucket, you're gonna lose it. So all of you people who are giving offering in your bucket, you have been losing money like crazy. <laughs> if you put money in the basket, you are going to lose it. But if you put it in my hand, everyone will multiply you and give you a base. My God. My God, she naked. <laughs> this is getting worse by the day. Why? Because he doesn't want people to count it. He doesn't want the responsibility. He doesn't want the money to get into other people for people to know the amount of money. And he doesn't want any of it to get missing. He wants everything for himself. And he's saying, God will not bless it if you put it in the back in the bucket. God will not be bless it if you put it in the basket. God Almighty is speaking to you right now to sow that seed. Now, precious people, I do not want you passing offering buckets. I want the people to bring their seed to me and put it in my hand because the, the anointing of God is on me right now. If you put it in that, in that bucket, you're going to lose it. But if you put what? it in, in my hand, you're going to gain something from heaven tonight. What? So, 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 so. No, no, no. This guy is belonged in jail. I'm sorry. This guy needs to go to jail. Somebody needs to send Benny Hinn to jail. I'm sorry. Now I understand why they're after him because... This is too much. If you put the money in the bucket, you're going to lose it. If you put it in my hand, you're going to bless. You could be blessed by God. Because the ability is on me, my person, not in the basket. So God is not in that auditorium. <laughs> Let's hear that again. I can't believe it. Is it happening? So
so that seed. Now, precious people, I do not want you passing offering buckets. I want the people to bring their seed to me and put it in my hand because the, the anointing of God is on me right now. If you put it in that, in that bucket, you're going to lose it. But if you put it in, in my hand, you're going to gain something from heaven tonight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If you lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost, God Almighty is speaking to you right now to sow that seed. Now, precious people, I do not want you passing off in buckets. By the way, it's not anybody, it's not God Almighty who is speaking, it's Benny who is speaking. Now he's saying, don't pass offering bucket, don't put money in the bucket, put it to my hands right now. Okay? You sure? Does that you should? Yeah. That seed. Now, precious people, I do not want you passing offering buckets. I want the people to bring their seed to me and put it in my hand <laughs> because the, the anointing of God is on me right now. If you put it in that in that bucket, you're gonna lose it. Stop. If you put it in, if you put your offering in the bucket, you're going to lose it. <laughs> if you put your offering in the bucket, you're going to lose it. If you put your offering in the bucket, you're going to lose it. Because the anointing is only on me, not on the bucket, <laughs> not in the hall. So God is not omnipresent; it's only on Benny Okay. <laughs> to sow. That seed. Now, precious people, I do not want you passing offering buckets. I want the people to bring their seed to me and put it in my hand because the, the anointing of God is on me right now. If you put it in that, in that bucket, you're going to lose it. Fish. But if you put it in, in my hand, you're going to gain something from heaven tonight. <laughs> so, Everybody live. And some gullible people will do that. Can you believe it? Gullible people will go and do that. Because they've been mesmerized. They've been They've been deceived, they've been brainwashed, and they don't even know it. And that's why you see the good music is coming, everything is going on, so that they will brainwash the minds of the people, and people don't even know what they're doing. Okay, go ahead. Lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost, right now. I want many of you to start walking forward. If you're giving a thousand, five hundred, or a hundred, start coming down. Right now, come on. I want to lay my hand on your envelope. I want to lay my hand on your envelope. Stop. I wanna... Now he wants to lay hands on the envelope. <laughs> Go ahead. Ask God to prosper you tonight. You in your homes, keep calling that number on the screen and do the same thing. And I will lay my hand on your name when you call it in. Right now, call that number on the screen. I believe in God for the release of a harvest tonight on you. I believe in God to bless your life, bless your future, bless your home with prosperity, divine prosperity. People of God, can we lift our hands and pray in the Spirit right now? Come on, everyone, lift your voices and pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, I give you praise for the anointing. Jesus, Jesus, I give you praise for the anointing. Get to that. Get to your phone. No. Call. You see, where is the prayer? He's not praying for people. He's just collecting the money and using the music to create the atmosphere so that people will think it is God. They make everything to look spiritual and then he's collecting with one or two hands from people and then speaking in the microphone that the people at home also should begin to call to make pledge and right now be sending their money. Okay? All in your seed right now, whether a thousand, five hundred, or a hundred, do it now. God is speaking to you. I'm asking for those amounts because I want to see your faith released tonight. When you sow larger amounts, you release faith. And when faith is released, God Almighty will release the harvest. That's just the way it works, people. That's the way it works. While the people here in this audience are coming down, you go ahead and call that number on the screen. Do it now. Believe God for a supernatural harvest right now. Jesus, I worship you. Jesus, I give you. Stop. Not as leadership. See what is happening in the body of Christ. Somebody needs to talk about these things. I mean, somebody needs to talk about these things because these things are just outrageous. This, uh, you know, not just deception, it's theft and robbery in the name of God. I'm using the name of God to do it. But thank God, uh, to the credit of Benningham, we have to say that Benningham started repenting and he said he's, he's, he, has, he's, you know, he has messed up. But let's have, let's have a look at Benningham's brother. These people were in my church. You know, Benningham's brother was in my church, in my office. There's Henry, 
this this is the knee, the nephew, the father of that is the the brother of Benahim and the father of this guy. You know, I know them very well. They've been to my house. They've been to my office. They've been to my you know in Benahim too. So I know all these guys very well. So let's hear what they have to say. Group uh, group Like to see your uncle Benny hurt, thrown in jail, ostracized, mocked. Definitely not. All right. Yeah. With do I have a bone to pick? Would yeah. that be another one? Yeah, sure. Not at all. All right. Would you like would you like to see your uncle Benny hurt, thrown in jail, ostracized, mocked? Definitely not. All right. With that in mind, sir, you traveled with your uncle for two years working for him on the road. I would like to ask you, Costi, if you were watching television one night and you're flipping through the channels, because that's what we men do, we flip through the channels, and there appears your Uncle Benny Hinn on a platform on Christian TV asking for money. Costi, would you send money into your uncle's ministry? <laughs> I wouldn't. He used to eat from that same body. He used to be paid over a million, two million dollars a year just by cashing people from people's offering. But when he got to know the truth, he married a girl that was going to just normal evangelical church. And then his eyes got open. He said he would not even give to his brother because he knows how much, how the money is being spent. Let's, let's go back a little bit. Yep. Right. You say that in a few minutes, Pally. All right, I got. I've got. I've got a few questions for you. Obviously, yeah. Costi, do you hate your uncle? Absolutely not. Do you have an axe to grind? No, I'm not sure what the phrase means. But do I have a bone to pick? Would yeah. that be another one? Yeah, sure. Not at all. All right. Would you Would you like to see your uncle Benny hurt, thrown in jail, ostracized, mocked? Definitely not. All right. With that in mind, sir, you traveled with your uncle for two years working for him on the road. I would like to ask you, Costi, if you were watching television one night and you're flipping through the channels, because that's what we men do, we flip through the channels, and there appears your uncle Benny Hinn on a platform on Christian TV asking for money. Costi... Would you send money into your uncle's ministry? I wouldn't. And that's because uh, working with him and really growing up in the inner circle of the faith healing and prosperity gospel and word of faith movement and add all the others, charismatic, third wave, all of that, uh, I saw where the money went. I knew so, why it would be. I saw where the money went. He knows where the money went. I saw where the money went. All of you should pay attention. He grew up in that family. He grew up in that home. He knew that the money didn't go to the poor. The money didn't go to the orphans. The money didn't go to the widows. The money didn't go to the needy. He knew where the money went. It went into flashy lifestyle. It went into wasting your money. You are thinking you are giving to God. You are thinking you are giving to anointed men of God. But he said, I will never give to my brother because I know where the money went. Okay? It didn't go for the gospel. You were thinking the money is going to the gospel. No way! Maybe 10% of it will go to the gospel. But he knows where the money went. Channels, and there appears your Uncle Benny Hinn on a platform on Christian TV asking for money. Costi, would you send money into your uncle's ministry? I wouldn't, and that's because uh, working with him and really growing up in the inner circle of the faith healing and prosperity gospel and word of faith movement and add all the others, charismatic, third wave, all of that, uh, I saw where the money went. I knew why we would begin to fundraise harder at certain times throughout the year based on spending and whatnot, and uh, it's a lifestyle that is built for us on the backs of the sick and the poor and donations are key to maintaining that lifestyle Stop. so you see is the lifestyle that is sponsoring them that is built for them you, you have what he said 
the money, the offering, and the begging for money and everything is for to maintain their lifestyle, the family's lifestyle. But he, he, he is confessing now that I realize that that money is being collected from the poor, from the ordinary people, from the widows, from the weak, from the sick. The sick people, the vulnerable people are the ones we are exploiting and using their money to maintain our own lifestyle. Uh, I know there's well-intentioned people that give money to faith healers and little old ladies that are really being deceived. And so they mean well. And I think God is so, merciful. And he used the word deceived. That these old ladies, these sick and the vulnerable people are being deceived. Okay. Saves many people out of the movement. We know that happens all the time. But uh, no matter the intentions of people who give, that money is going towards maintaining the lifestyle of that man or woman. Oh. All right. So the money is all going to maintain the lifestyle. Of these people. And this is a family member. He grew up with Benny Hinn. In the same family. Okay, go ahead. Reason number one. You would not give money to your uncle. And I, I pondered that statement. I had to imagine if my uncle were in ministry. And he, he appeared on television and said send in money. Or he even asked me directly. Would you give money to the ministry? To say no to a family member is a very profound statement. So number one, you would say the money is not stewarded well. Would you please give us an example of how the money that many people give, poor people, people who are hoping for a miracle, who are promised things, where's some of that money going, Koski? Uh, well, when I say to maintain a man or woman's lifestyle, uh, I want to be clear, and you and I both know that, biblically speaking, in the church, we support the local church, and pastors all have a lifestyle. So that's great uh, that men and their families can live and serve the church full time, and that's great. But when I say lifestyle, I mean excessive lifestyle. Uh, homes and properties upwards of $10 million, and I'm being conservative so that I'm my integrity is intact and we don't exaggerate, but the number gets a lot higher when you add in multiple properties. Uh, our hotel, when I traveled, one of my favorite places, and I've mentioned this before, was the Burj Al Arab, the massive hotel in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates, that's shaped like a sail. It's on a man-made island. You get picked up in three luxury cars, and we stayed in the Royal Suite. I remember sleeping in my own room within the Royal Suite. There were multiple rooms. Uh, the square footage is beyond what uh, most people will ever own if they had two homes put together, and it was $25,000 per night to stay in the royal stop, suite. Stop. And you see? That is how anointed men of God are living. And this is not from their businesses. This is from the money the man is begging for. $1,000 into my pocket every day. $25,000 per night to $25,000. $25,000, that's like a car. Some houses cost only $25,000. $25,000. Not $2,500. Not $5,000. Not $5,000. $25,000. Not $10,000. Not $5,000. Not $15,000. Not $12,000. Not $13,000. Not $15,000. Not $16,000. A night. What about if you stay in that kind of hotel for a week or for a year? $25,000. $25,000. In 10 days, that will cut off a million. In 20 days, that is half a million. In a month, we are running to a million dollars just for one room hotel. One room. And then there are the team members. Okay. The hotel has actual gold all throughout it. Literally thousands and thousands of tons of gold. You can look this up. It's legit. And then we had an entourage with us. And so there were other suites that we had for uh, what was a layover on our way to go and serve in India, in Mumbai, for that crusade in 2004 that had over a million no. people in attendance. You see? They are going to India where there are million poor people who cannot eat. Who are eating from the dog. Who are eating from the from the dirt in the street, from the garbage. When they, on the way to, to, to India, 
where there are people who are living in the street. They are spending one million dollars just to pay for the hotel of the team. Just on stopover, a few days stopover, a million dollars just for the hotel. And they, they cannot give that money to the people in the street in the crusade. So the people in the crusade, they just preach. They don't give them food. They don't give them money. They don't give them help. But they are splashing the money, whereas they collected the money from the people that they are going to India for crusade. But the money is being spent in Dubai. They went to shield in Dubai. And the people their money is collected for in, in India, they don't see one dollar. And they are spending one night $25,000 per room. And you say we should keep quiet? You are wicked if you keep quiet. You are wicked. I don't care. If it is your money, go use it. But if it is money you are collecting from people, offering is wickedness. To be quiet about it. If you are a businessman, make your money and go and use it that way. But when you are collecting money from people, and people are believing that they are using it for evangelism, and it's being used like this just to shield, just to enjoy in Dubai before going to India, where people cannot even find food to eat. <laughs> and that would give you an idea of how we're living, or how I was, and still, when our family members do, off of donations, and the travel was not on uh, Emirates or Cathay Pacific or United Airlines. The travel was on a Gulfstream 4 that we leased from Morris Cirillo in Florida. At that time, we were leasing it. And so uh, you're, it's birds of a feather flock together. And there's one thing that you enjoy above it all. It's not the gospel. It's not the glory of Christ. It's not the joy of doing real ministry. It's a lifestyle that gives you anything you want. Oh, you hear what they said? He was a part of the team. The reason why he was in the ministry was not because of the glory of God or because of salvation of people or the good of but because of the lifestyle. So the reason why they are in the old ministry business is because of the lifestyle that the people are providing for them through their offerings. Not because of God, not because of anointing. And this is coming from the inner causes. Costi, you talk about in your book, again, it's called Defining Deception. When you went to school in Canada, uh, either your mother or your father would drive you to school. In what kind of vehicle? Uh, Mercedes Benz. I see. So you really, from whether it was traveling with Uncle Benny or just your family lifestyle at home was, was funded on the donations of people who gave trusting that it would be used well. Yeah, and we tied ourselves into Christ and into the gospel. So to give you an idea, uh, we would always elevate the man of God so that when people were giving, they were giving to support the man of God, who is God's mouthpiece and his herald. And therefore, when people are giving to us, and we lived, the square footage was just under 10,000 square feet, our mansion up in Canada, um, with the Benzes and all that lifestyle. I'm on sport court growing up. A hot indoor hot tub, steam room, outdoor pool, just the, I mean, we lived like it was the Ritz Carlton every day. And that is, is applauded because we're serving the Lord and we should be taken care of. And the laborer is worthy of his wages and you shouldn't muzzle the ox while he's training the grain. And every scripture is twisted. And of course, we are the benefactors. As you mentioned, a pastor should indeed be paid for his labors the ox shouldn't be muzzled but your particular ox was getting a little bit a little bit fat on the, on the feedings of poor people all right so costi you would not give money to your uncle benny Hinn's ministry because the money is not stewarded well what would be reason number two reason number two would be that the gospel he's preaching that the donations are going towards, which the donations are really funding the lifestyle, is a false gospel. Uh, it is the Jesus of word of faith theology, no. the Jesus... You see, he's saying the gospel that his brother, Benny Hinn, is preaching is a false gospel. Who, what, who, who will you believe if you don't believe the brother? He was part of the ministry, he was a cashier in the ministry, he was one of our sisters of Benny Hinn, in his own church, his brother. He said the gospel they are preaching is a false gospel. 
It's a false gospel. who was just a man who was anointed by God and therefore you can be just like him the Jesus who was born again uh, the Jesus who just really wants you healthy happy and wealthy uh, faith not in Christ to save your soul and to be justified by faith but faith as a force is what we taught in order to unlock all the windows and riches of heaven that's not what faith is confession is confessing your sins to Christ Romans 10 9 to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that's not a confession to get a Bentley or a Ferrari or a house you don't you can't use uh, faith for salvation as faith for stuff it doesn't work that way and so knowing now what I understand having studied the Word of God on these topics and of course the Holy Spirit graciously causing the scales to fall from my own eyes and saving my life uh, I would never give money to that version of the gospel and it's because it's a false gospel. Reason number one, you would not give to Uncle Benny's ministry. The money is being frittered away. Reason number two, he doesn't preach the true gospel. When we return on Wretched with Costi Hinn, nephew of Benny Hinn, how it is that Costi and why it is that he left the employ of Uncle Benny Hinn and... What you can do and say to help somebody you know and love who may be following a prosperity preacher like Benny Hinn to get out of Well, 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 well. Victor, maybe it's time for you to be the mouthpiece now for the people. What are you hearing? I've shown two or three. Is it two? Two or something. Three. I showed uh, Adeboye, then I showed Benny Hinn himself, yeah, okay. collecting, giving my hand. Yeah. You might need to come into the camera. Then this is the third one. What what will be your assessment so far? I think uh, this guy, the nephew, just vindicates everything you've been talking about. Because if they are saying, ah, "Do you know them? Have you seen them?" And this one has seen them. But I've seen them too in my church. They came to my church. The, the Hins, yeah, the Benny Hin. No, I mean, they came to my church. You know what they did in the church? It was so horrible. You know, because I was not planning to receive them in my church. But it was a colleague of mine, a friend of mine in town. He had a small church in, in Kiel. And you know the way it happens is that the pastors come and talk to you because you have a big church and say that uh, let's jo have a joint event because, you know, let's be our churches and your church together because my church alone cannot do it. And, you know, it was so bad. These guys, dad, and the Benin brothers, two of them, they came to our church. And once the offering was... We, they, they went themselves. They said, Pastor, we want to take our offering themselves. So they went to take the offering themselves. He ain't kid. And once the offering was being collected, you, don't, you remember what happened? You know, normally, the offering is supposed to be collected by the ushers. And the ushers collected the money, and they said, bring, bring everything in. We thought we were going to pray for it. But as soon as the ushers were bringing it, we said, okay, will you pray for it? They said, yes, okay. They said they, they will pray, but they didn't even pray. They took everything and called the other brother and gave everything okay. to him. And that one quickly ran out of the platform. And nobody even knew how much it was. <laughs> they didn't even allow us to count it. And the way they were doing it physically, and because the ushers were saying, but we need to go and pray for it. They said, no, no, no. They were taking, almost fighting with the ushers to take all the money. You were there. You saw it. We have the video in my church of how they were doing it. The inns. You could, we, nobody, after that, people just began to walk out of the hall because nobody was ready to listen to the message anymore because they were not there for the no, message. That's not the value no, they, they didn't come for the message. They came for the money. But anyway, go ahead. You yeah. want to start with the last one? Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so the nephew was a part of the ministry. He knows exactly how they run. So, if anybody will even be saying that you are quite far from them, this is his nephew who was a part of the ministry. Family member. Family member. Grew up together. Yeah, who knows everything. I and mean, before you show this video, I had read his article on the issue before, but I mean, it's very good that you even had a video. video because if it was, I would say maybe fabricated, but it's face, he's saying it. And that's the model of ministry that everybody is saying. It's copying. It's they are copying. copying the wrong path. Yeah. They are going to, they are throwing themselves to hell. Yeah. Because it's the God of Mammon that is ruling the guy yes. and everybody that is following him. Yeah. And you know, sir, of recent, this year, I think it was maybe early this month, 
He said they repented. I don't know if you yeah, saw that. Yeah, he said they repented. The yeah. first that I read of, sir, I was a year old when the, that happened. That's so why I didn't know of it. When he said he repented. 1993 that he repented. Of the same thing he repented of. <laughs> 1993. But that is the one you know. I know of 1985 when he repented. When he repented of the same thing. Yes. 1993. 2004. He repented again. He repented again. again. <laughs> 2010. He repented on, on again. TV, he repented again. In fact, last year, 2017, he still repented. repented. <laughs> He's always repented. So I'm wondering, because a lot of people were like, wow, wow, the man, the man of God, at least, I was not, I was just looking, okay. Who's Let it? it not be like, we didn't give him a chance. But if it's about repenting, you know, this guy's very, he was with uh, Chris Oyaki Lohim in Chris Chris Nigeria. Nigeria. church. So they, one million dollars from Nigeria. He said, shift, let me, let me. So, sir, when I started money, yeah, when I started ministry, nothing to do about God, Just and that was the same God. model even when I started ministry. Mm -hmm. So, there was that fight between my dad. Okay, you know, there was this way you know, you, you know, that you are called into ministry, and you are saying, Oh, if I'm called into ministry, no, even need to be think of money. That was the mi mindset. I have seen a guy who dropped out of school, probably you even know him, he dropped out of medicine because of this same mindset. Of ministry, we take care of him. What what? He dropped out of medical school. You know the guy. That the ministry will take care of him. Yeah, ministry will take care of him. You know him, but I don't want to mention his name okay. on there. He said ministry will take care uh, of him. he was even demanding money to be to be paid from the God's Embassy Church in Crimea then. So he was going to do ministry. Yes, yeah, he, he left school to do ministry. And all his own mindset is that the ministry will be. Taking care of him, yeah, paying, paying him. Okay. So that's the model that many people have for ministry. That's why ministry is lucrative. That's why a lot of people, are, they are not a ministry for God. They are ministry for the model of... For the lifestyle. Yeah. For the, because this is a model that once you are in ministry, eh, poverty. That's why some people are attacking you. Ah, you want the church to go back to poverty. But that's not it. The church can be rich and the people be poor. We've, that's the model that we have now. We have a rich church, but a poor nation. So the nation is in depression, economic recession, but the church is ever rich. But nobody, now the members are not feeling the rich. So, so, so you, you, you get it. So this is the model that all of them have. This uh, five style, Hollywood lifestyle. So, and people don't know that they are the ones financing it. They are the ones. So you think it is God blessing, but you know, it's not God. It's you. You are the one. <laughs> you are the one. And is is what what his it's nephew definitely. has said now should open your eyes more. There's even one maybe maybe I'll try to look for it. The guy was interrogated by the police officers yes. of what he, the shopping spree that he was, he was doing. Was good, yeah. So these are the things they do with your money. Yeah, you think God is blessing them. Now he said something. If if they will play the video, we can analyze the video of Benin now. So we see how just a lie. And concocted everything is. If you have any his video, we can play it now. He said what? Where he was telling them that he seen harvest that night. Yes. How many people got harvest that night? Even after. Nobody gets the harvest. The only one who received harvest that night was the one who said, Is, don't, "Don't put it inside basket. To put it in my hand because the anointing is upon me." Anyone who is, <laughs> we know that anyone who says anointing is upon me is a liar. Because the dispensation that we are is it's not the dispensation of anointing upon. It's a dispensation of anointing within. So God already dwells in man now. He doesn't need to come upon man. But if, if it's God not in the hall there, if they want to put it in the basket, <laughs> what's wrong with putting the body in the basket? It has to be. He said you will lose it. Yeah, you, yeah, lose you, it. Won't, you won't get, you won't get anything. Yeah, you will but lose. It's only when you put it in his hands that you get. So he wants... And I, I, another thing to be sure of is if that was his church that he was preaching. Yeah, no, no, he was gathering the partners. But was it was he in his church? In a hotel. It was in a hotel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because now he must go to his land. And that's another thing they do when they go visiting, like they did in mm -hmm. your church. They do that very well. They want to make sure they are offering. Yeah, don't touch my offering, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't touch my offering, no. So you see how they are vibrantly Greed. fighting for money. Greed. Yeah. They are addicted by the God of Mammon. Yeah. That's all their ministry is all about. To it's sell all about money. money. It's, it's all about money. They, in fact, they lose. 
God is not in the picture. Didn't no, lose God. No. Like you were pointing out, he didn't pray for the offering. He didn't. He was just saying thank you for the offering. He was rather talking about the offering at home. No, no, he was there yeah. the at call, home. Call yeah. and, 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 and measure how much you want to give. I mean, this is this is the this is the, this is just the uh, what's it called the the standard. This is the model that they've given. The same thing this guy is copying Ashimolo. The same thing Mike Mudok is doing. The same. This is just the model. So yeah, the, oh, yeah, all of them. This is what this is just the model. They are flashing like that. Boye, oye, this is the model. So it's just about money. They don't care. It's just about the money. How it will come, where it will come from, they don't care. It's about the money. We've seen how you are dying, you know, you are sick, oh. you can't pay for your house, uh, house rent, oh. they don't care. You can't pay for your school, they don't care. Just give them. Of recent time, I read of a story of a guy who wanted to pay a tithe of 11,000 naira. So he was not using POS. He now mistakenly typed 110,000 naira. Mm. And he went back to the church to complain that I wanted to pay a tithe yeah. of 11,000, but I mistakenly had uh, to pay, yeah, to pay 110,000. Yeah. And was asking for a point. They refused to give him. What, they what refused to give him. That? I have even forgotten. Nigeria. Nigeria. I can look for it on Is the, it Nigeria? Yeah, it's in Nigeria. Could look for it on the news. It's on the news. They refused to refund it. His own money. His own money. He, that he, he was even obeying the principle of time to at least that even though it's it just by mistake they did not refund him that shows you where their money that where their art is they do not even consider what does this guy want to i mean he must have had plans for his money in fact no, just like the government, government money or somebody took 35 money million to... one calling the took it to your deposit to your deposit church the money was meant they were meant to use to create peace in in the niger delta and the guy went and took and give it as tight to uh, uh, or your depot. And you see, sir. And your depot didn't return it. How will you return? And the one that uh, came from Sheraton Hotel to Christ Embassy. Christ Embassy. Did not return it. No. And recently, the, uh, to talk about Adeboe's video that you showed yeah. and calling for money for one, building. One billion. For building. Yes. Sir, look at the trend in Nigeria. And it goes, it cuts across every sector of governance, both the private and the public. Now, when one steals money in Nigeria, the first thing he's thinking of is, is to go and give to God. Yeah. So when he has settled God, eh? <laughs> you know the way you bribe Now God is system. protection. <laughs> so a, a city senator, a city senator right now, stole a lot of money. The first thing he built was church. Mm. Even though the road to his town is not good, he built a church in that community. They, uh, from, so the one billion, we know where it's coming yeah. from. One of the, uh, you, uh, you know, the arms deal they did now. Yeah. One of the uh, um, militants. No, not the militants. The the soldier, the Ogapata okay, The general. Yeah, the generals, the boss, go go go. Uh, the service chiefs yes. yeah, of the past administration. Chief of army staff. Yeah. yeah. Who was caught in the multi-billion? Scheme, yeah. Yeah, uh, 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 yeah. The guy, eh? The moment he stole the money like this, you know, he built a church. He built a church. Wow. There's another guy from NMPC who was caught in a Kaduna with, yes, with the house, with yeah. the catch of money. Do you know that guy who built a church? Wow. Then, of recent, I now read someone donated so $1 billion church building. To Winners Chapel in Lagos. Can't you see the trend? The trend is just there because those who understand the how hard money it is was. to earn yeah. money, they are looking for the wealth. They always look out for the welfare of another person mm. who cannot earn that much. So it, it's impossible. Say you say all of us are going to heaven. So what are you? Building? <laughs> what are you building? <laughs> Structures on earth. As if we are going to remain here forever. Yeah. <laughs> And now that building again only works to serve purpose of what? Can the homeless sleep in that place? Will you allow? It's empty now until they have their once a year or twice a year event. So what's the economic benefit 3 of, of such a huge structure that people are going hungry to pay for? I remember when private universities were starting, sir. They taxed members like this, sir, down to the villages. Hmm. Because I didn't attend those churches, so... But my friends, the, my who were my schoolmates, 
who were attending the churches were saying that their parents were giving money with the hope that if our church can have university like this and eh, the way jam is just doing i mean that was the hope those guys were just giving 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 but someone will say your money is too small don't these guys are being funded by at the back of by, by by the society by these people who don't know what their money is being used for and we we just must help our brothers so we must help our sisters so we must help our mothers so. we must help our fathers so it's enough enough is enough oh. see what we are doing is we are just piling the money that we don't even have and we are giving it to those who have already received surplus from us politicians will steal who will they give it to pastor doctors will take back who will they give it to pastors every sector where corruption is taking place. Sir, even market women, sir, we, we hide we the price. You. But we'll be thinking of paying tithe. You have to cheat somebody first, and then, then you now go and say to God. You see the mindset, you see how decadence they brought it in. So, but the whole basis of this is the fact that ministry that is being practiced in Nigeria is not a ministry of, unto God, no. but a ministry unto to mammon. mammon. It's mammon. So it's not a service unto God. But the service unto mammon. And ever in history, there's never been a place where mammon is worshipped and equality is observed. Equity is never observed. And that's why in Nigeria, there is a very wide gap between the rich and the poor. That's why in Nigeria today, there's a very wide gap between those who have and those who do not have anything. Because when mammon is glorified, the rights of human beings as they are ne it's never upheld poverty always move in the community but some will be rich that's why in the olden days in fact in the days of julius caesar mammon was the order of the day and that's why jesus could make a sharp contrast between mammon and god because in those days in those in that society mammon was the order of the day and that's why the taxpayer could be cheating the people that's why jesus could be talking about the are widows being robbed by these Pharisees because Mammon was was the one who was in charge. It Not was like it is in our churches today, and that's exactly what we have. And when that exists in societies, you don't find equality. You don't find people caring for the poor because people are only caring to serve their master. So that's why Jesus was saying you can only serve one master. So either you are serving God or you are serving Mammon. If you are serving God, you'll be going for the attribute of God. But if you are serving mammon, you will only be thinking of how to get more resource to yourself. And, I mean, centralized resource to yourself. You don't think of people, you are only thinking of how to get more, to get more, to get more. But, can we continue with that? Is that sustainable for our nation? Is that sustainable for our communities? I don't think so. And that's why I think but interventions like yours but, is necessary. Yeah, because they are actually leading people astray. People think they are serving God. Mm. People, yeah. no, no. If you were serving God, you would have seen it. And sir, uh, may I say this? If you look at uh, uh, Europe, is split between South and I mean, uh, especially this Western Hemisphere between uh, West and East. Yes, yes. West yes. and East. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope I'm getting my geography right. But countries like uh, Greece, like Spain, those countries going up like that, mm -hmm. you see that there's a very contrast, a sharp South, contrast. Southern Europe. Yeah, yeah between, so, yeah, Southern Europe, sir, mm -hmm. and Northern Europe. There's a very sharp contrast between the economies and the economies of countries like uh, Germany, yeah. Netherlands, mm -hmm. Denmark, and, and those like that. What was the main difference? Mammon. Mammon. Because Mammon was what was at work in orthodoxy before the uh, Protestant. Protestantism came in. So, orthodoxy still held sway in Greece. That's why we have the Greek orthodoxy. It still held sway in Spain. It Portugal. still held sway in Portugal and all of those. So, till today, because of the grip of that orthodoxy and mammonism that came with orthodoxy, their economies, their people are still suffering from it. But when you look at the Protestant work ethics, the Protestant freedom that came with the Reformation, you see that God took over now. We're talking about work, we are talking about the five solar, solar fide and yeah. the other so that, that, that brought about a fixation on God that took it away from the system. The living God. That 
you now start seeing good welfare God system. Love. Yeah, you start seeing good welfare system. Kindness, you start seeing, yes. Yeah. Even their prison is about reformation. That's why till today, America in all of its greatness does still not still does not measure up to Denmark. Yeah. Because of the the mindset. The mindset. So the same thing with Nigeria. As long as Mammonism is the order of day in our religion and it influences our society, poverty will always increase. And these guys, they are buying private jets every day. By the day one just bought now. Which one? Fufeng. He bought it. <laughs> Just got the private jet after the invasion of all oh, those squads. Yeah. So you see what they are just doing. It's just about the money, 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 money. And like you said, this is what actually encourages corruption because someone thinks the see you said top ten, top ten, Abi, mean? one billion, one billion. billion. So those who are giving one billion are the top ten. What happens, sir, to that one person who has ten thousand but is giving his last? What top? It doesn't is? count. It doesn't count. Mm -hmm. And so for him to now to become, uh, to have some sort of relevance, he would do anything to give more. Go beyond his limits. Steal. And that's how stealing comes in. Yeah, corruption. That's how corruption comes in. Thank you so much. Yes, Thank you. Well, let's go to the descriptions today. So the topic of the series is the prosperity gospel and the God of Mammon. Disarming covetousness. That's the topic of today. All those things are based on the, uh, co co covetousness. All these ministers we have seen, all these practices, they are based on the God of Mammon, covetousness. The God of Mammon, or Mammon, walks through covetousness. Luke twelve fifteen says, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. Beware of covetousness. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. But as long as we, be, we still keep on thinking that the quality of a man's life is that consists in, in his possession, in the abundance of his possession, we are under the God of Mammon. As long as you are thinking that your value depends on what you have, you are being dominated by the God of Mammon. It is Mammon that is ruling you if you are measuring your life or the life of others by what they have, that is a proof that the God of Mammon is ruling your life. The reason Jesus said, take heed or beware, is because this particular sin of covetousness is so subtle and difficult to detect unless you are truly on your guard spiritually. The force of covetousness is in wrong paradigm that the quality of life is in possession. Once you begin to have that paradigm, that your life depends, the quality of your life, the value of your life depends on your possession, once you begin to think like that, you are under the dominion of mammon. Mammon has gotten a hold of you. And if you are using the possession of people or the amount of things people have to determine whether you relate to them or not, either the, you know how you value them, either you respect them or not, if that is what makes you to determine your the people you relate to, it means you are under the God of Mammon. The best quality of life is in knowing God. The, the, that is the basis we should be using to judge people. The knowledge of God, that is the highest quality of life you could have. That is the highest value you could have in life. Not possession, not what you have. 1 Corinthians 1, 29-31 says, That no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. He who glories, let him glory in the Lord. It is the knowledge of God that is the highest glory. The knowledge of God is the highest you know, criteria for glory. It is the highest value you could possess. Getting to know God, being a friend of God, or having understanding of God is the greatest acquisition, is the greatest possession you could have. Not wealth, not physical possession. Wrong philosophy of life, even in the church. 
Because in the church today, people are now being measured and judged by the sizes of their uh, money or their wealth or their building or their crowd or their church or no, but of their possession. So we now respect only people who have money. We now meet people. People can only meet the pastors by the amount of giving you have. If you give one billion, if you give one thousand, if you can give, the more you can give, it now determines your wealth. That is Mammon's philosophy. That is the God of Mammon's philosophy. It's not the God of the Bible's philosophy. The God of the Bible doesn't rate people by their possessions. The God of the Bible doesn't honor people by what they have or what they don't have. The God of the Bible honors people by the knowledge of God that they possess. Hence, the drive for tithe. So why is the drive for tithe in churches? The drive for tithe, power, position, and all that is all because of the God of Mammon. When a church is, being, is driven by tithe, when a church is always pursuing after tithe, power, position, that means that church is under not Almighty God. That church is not under Almighty God. That church is not under God. That church is under the God of Mammon. The God of Mammon and Confessiousness is the Lord of that church. It's called Power, Wisdom, Wealth. PWW. Power, Wisdom, Wealth. These are things that we should never possess, we should never pursue. These are things we should never put priority to. These are things that should serve us to know God better and to serve God better. Power, wisdom, wealth. That is the whole essence of life for this whole world. The spirit of the world rules through power. The people strive for power. They strive to get wisdom to, so that they use it to get wealth. And it's all about wealth, power, wisdom. Or power, wisdom, wealth. That is what is ruling the world. That is an indication of the spirit of the world. So if you are under that, if you are in a church or organization, that the emphasis is on power or wisdom or wealth, wisdom of the world, that is your education to just be able to get a position, it means you are under the spirit of this world. You are under the spirit of mammon. But in the Bible, Hosea 6.6 6 says, For I desire mercy. This is what God thinks about it. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings, you see. This is what God is saying. God is not, God is saying what you should desire first of all and seek above all is the knowledge of God. Not power, not wealth, not wisdom, not wealth, but the knowledge of God. That is the paramount essence of life or the paramount value of life. <laughs> the minefield of Satan is covetousness. Matthew 6, 19 says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. And that's what is happening in these churches. All these people that are, you know, laying emphasis on money, mammon, they are laying up treasures on earth and moth and rust will destroy. Thieves will break in because they are not laying up treasures in heaven. The message of covetousness, greed and mammon has inject, has uh, invaded the church today. Has invaded the church today. Greek conventional invaded the church today. First Timothy six, nine to ten. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which. Some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Greed takes you away from God. Desire and the love of money takes you away from God. Today in our society, even our churches, our churches people, even in our churches, people take covetousness to be a blessing. That is the problem in the churches today. Even in the churches, People take covetousness to be a blessing. They call it different names, prosperity, breakthrough, anointing, as long as it sounds spiritual. But it is uh, covetousness that is hidden on that. Uh, it is all covetousness. Matthew 6, 25, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food? And the body more than clothing? 
Life is much more than all these material things. And that thing that is more is what we should be seeking for. And what are those things that are more? That is the knowledge of God. That is, we, uh, that is uh, justice, righteousness, love. You know, those are the things that are more. Those are the most valuable things in life. Not power, not wisdom, not wealth. Covetousness is so very important to many people that God, even in the Old Testament, put it as the tenth commandment. You see, covetousness is hated by God. It's so powerful in the lives of people that it's part of the 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 the, the, the tenth commandment. Exodus twenty seventeen: You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his horse, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Covetousness. In fact, the adver advertising industry strives on the covetousness of men. If you are moved to acquire just because you see things with others or other people are acquiring, you might need to check your heart. The covetousness must have taken over your heart. If you value people according to what they possess, you might be on the wrong path as well. Remember what Jesus says in Luke 12, 15, the value and quality of a man's life does not depend, does, does not, does not depend on what he has or possesses. Therefore, we can conclude that the force of covetousness is fueled by looking into men and assessing them according to their possessions and totally that is a totally wrong mindset man is valuable not because of what he has or does he have but because of his content genesis 127 he is made in god's image more so jesus died for all men not just the those who have and or those who don't have the only boast a man has is knowing is in knowing God in justice, love and righteousness. These are the things that are more than life itself. You should be ready to give your life for these things. Justice in knowing God, the knowledge of God, justice, love and righteousness. These are the values that life is all about, not about possession. Because of covetousness, most people neglect knowledge of God. They neglect love, they neglect righteousness, and they pursue power, wisdom, and wealth because of covetousness. Even in the church, most are driven by covetousness. Hence, more people fight for power, position, money, tight. Covetousness in the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the minefield of Satan. It is laid up with all kinds of dangers. The question is, are you con content with what you have? Matthew 6, 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. What can protect from covetousness? Seeking the kingdom. That we must be a kingdom person, seeking the kingdom of God to be saved from co covetousness. 1 Timothy 6, 11, but you, O man of God, Flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. These are the values. These are the things that are more valuable than a man's life. Flee these things. Flee covetousness and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. It is it. These are the values. So if you can overtake, overcome covetousness, the gospel, I mean, the, the God of Mammon will not have power over you, disarming covetousness. 